Hello, this is Cuckoo. Today, I want to talk about this. This is the Mod X6, Mod X6 by Yamaha. Uh, it's a keyboard player on tour kind of instrument, I'd say. I, I checked it out when it was brand new. I, I poked around in the engine, tried to see if it was something for me. Uh, and I kind of lost interest uh, immediately, sorry to say, but I did. I didn't find this, the sounds in there to be particularly interesting to me, uh, kind of glossy, uh, you know, very well produced, but very glossy stuff. So I kind of lost interest in it until very recently, uh, because later this fall, I'm going to be a keyboard player on tour. I rarely do this kind of stuff, but, but this time, it's for my studio neighbor friend over here, Han Huckleberg, behind this wall. If you, <laughs> yeah, I'm pointing at the wall. <laughs> and I helped her out with her new album, it's coming out in the fall. And uh, she eventually asked me if I wanted to, to be part of the band. It's going to be a small band, just three people. Han is going to do the vocals, I'm going to do the keyboard, and Jonas is doing all of the you know, main arrangements percussive and tonal stuff on an Akai force and uh, yeah it's going to be just the three of us so I figured once we started rehearsing I, I tried out my different synths and to see which one could be the perfect companion for this but since we're just three people and uh, we're going to play everything live no backing tracks nothing I figured out it was, it was really essential to bring some of the unique sounds from the album straight to the keyboard. So there is, for, for instance, one particular uh, piano that Hannah is using on all of the tracks, more or less, uh, which is sampled. Uh, re she recorded her uh, grandma's piano, something like this. And you can hear it sounds fluffy, unique, special. There's no way I could have reproduced this sound in any other way than using a sample. So um, yeah, this has a really robust sample engine. You can, you can, each instrument has, what is it, eight layers. Every layer can have its own uh, set of samples uh, that could, uh, over, you know, layer that could be placed in zones if you want to, it could fade uh, between different so zones, it could fade between different velocity layers, it's a really robust sample uh, sample engine in there. There's also an FM synth engine in there, uh, like Yamaha FM synth, a, a bit more powerful than the traditional engine, since it's got eight operators and more waveforms. It's uh, it sounds good, but it, it's not like it's trying to recreate uh, a DX7 kind of old school FM. No, it sounds modern and perhaps a bit more generic, but it's good. So you've got these two ways of making sounds here, based on samples or on FM synths. And yeah, for this, I'm I'm almost exclusively using the samples because that that way I can bring piano sounds like this one or I can produce sounds to sound to take more space and and uh, yeah if every sound has eight layers within itself times eight because there is eight tracks as well so this sound is a piano channel three here three is a, a celeste that I've sampled uh, a number of years ago they can play together. I have a bass here on track number two. And I made it disappear as I go up here. That way I can kind of layer in a, a bass to fatten up the piano. Like if I do this with a bass, could layer in that Celeste sound if you want to. Yeah, 
So it's really robust in, in making specific solutions. And on track number eight, I've got a little harp. Up here, there's just one song. And then it disappears, but I'm just gonna use it up here. I don't play much up there. Yeah. So you can build your own set there, especially I think in pop music where you play like really strict arrangement. You might start out with an A part that sounds like this. It might sound like that because that's <laughs> an example from the album. And then it's going into a kind of bridge. And then we need the piano. And then perhaps going fading out. Bring back the piano. It's really difficult to create this workflow uh, with with your with a lot of custom scenes, and you you need to bring a lot of stuff with you. With this, I can bring most of the sounds that I want. I could layer it out neatly on the keyboard as I want it. And I could quickly like fade in and out different sounds. And yeah, and you might have seen the iPad here, iPad Pro. Uh, this is part of my workflow when I've been um, like taking notes and uh, preparing uh, to rehearse. I've been taking notes here on the iPad. And actually, once the sounds are done, I don't need the screen anymore. I just put it here. <laughs> like straight over the screen and uh, then I, c I can watch the uh, all of the arrangement here take check my notes here and if I need more notes I can just type it in. so yeah this has been my workflow in preparing for this concert so that was a rather long intro but I want to to uh, take a moment and show you one of the songs and I want to show you how I'm taking notes and I want to show you uh, how I'm performing that song, what my kind of role in the band means and I'll talk about how I've prepared to, for this. Uh, yeah, so okay, let's uh, do that. Okay. Okay, so this is what it looks like. This is like the main interface over here. It can, it's a touch screen. It's a bit laggy, but it, the response in the performance is snappy. So even though the, the screen sort of lags, uh, it doesn't have any impact on the performance. Um, this is the mixer. And this is a smaller model, so we only got four uh, mixer uh, faders here. So in order to go to channel five and eight, we need to press this one. This is a violin sound that I made with the continuum fingerboard. Yeah. This is a custom piano sound that I sampled from uh, another studio neighbor uh, a few years ago. And then I used some of the, uh, the sounds in here to enhance it. This could actually be a good way to just showcase how I'm using the, the, the sample engine and the layers in here. So this, as you can see here, this is on channel six. And I'm playing it, you can see this is uh, moving accordingly, the levels here. So this is a mix of three sounds. It's the original sample that I sampled of uh, an upright piano, which is lovely. It's a key on sound. It's a key off sound. And both the key on and key off sound is something that I found in the library here. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna show you really quick how you kind of lay your sounds together. So uh, track six here, I'm gonna press it and press edit on the screen. And now this is the, the editor for this sample based sound. 
So we've got three elements here. Each element is a, a, la a sub-layer in, in the actual sound patch, a layer of samples. So an, a building block. We can check out element one. You can already see there, it's called Mios Piano. My neighbor was called Mios, Andreas Mios. So I brought his piano. This is a Rhodes key noise. This is a S6 flat, X6 flat key off. So I'm gonna mute everything. So we've got nothing now, nothing is playing. So let's start out with uh, the actual sample that, that I sampled. This is nice in itself, but I probably cut it a bit too tight, so when you start to play something else than chords, it doesn't sound like a piano at all. It's, it's just a it sounds really uh, not like a piano, but when you strike a chord, it's a piano. But I really wanted some prof professionally recorded or something more yeah something more tactile so i'm going to mute this now and move to the next element which is a road a roads key noise i'm going to turn it on just to give an express impression yeah the key action of a Rhodes. Okay, I'm gonna mute that. And the third layer is uh, S6 flat key off stereo. Um, S6 is a Yamaha grand piano, a smaller one. And uh, there's a lots of recordings of, of different pianos in here. And I found the, the S6 to be the most pleasing to me. I'm not, I don't really vibe with this really, um, kind of a sharp and clear bell-like uh, pianos with high overtones. Uh, I want them sort of soft. And I found the, the S6 in general was a more soft piano. Uh, but this is just a key off action. just to have a, a key off event every time I lift the keys. And you can see here, it says key off. I, I s trigger it when the key is off. Yeah. And these two together, and you can hear there's a reverb too right now. has this tactile, you know, there's something plucky, yeah, stuff going on there. And together with, um, with, with the main sample again. particularly difficult to build it although there are thousands of sounds to, to browse through so it could be really difficult to find the ones you want and the ones you like and prefer but yeah it, it's not it's not extremely difficult I think if you're into it uh, please let me know in the comments uh, if you want a, a tutorial on how to build sounds creatively with custom samples and how to yeah yeah, I, I, I'd love to show you. Um, so please let me know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in seeing. Okay, so this is just an example of how I've laid one uh, of the sounds here. Okay, I'm gonna move over to uh, the, let's see, to a specific song. 
before I'm doing that, I'm going to show you the iPad. Uh, I'm using a sp specific notes app called Good Notes. And uh, Good Notes is a good notes app, <laughs> as the name implies. It works really beautifully uh, in a very simple way. I really enjoy this uh, because it's there's so little custom control, so it's really focused on on getting stuff done. So when I take notes for this kind of music, is I'd say it's pop music, but you could it's for any type of music, I guess. It's valid, this method. I'm trying to find the pattern in the songs and write just the, what's necessary for me to remember when I'm gonna rehearse. And you can see here, I've, I've actually written down notes, actually notes for uh, like sheet music, musical notes. Uh, I know how to write notes, so it's not a big deal for me, but I think like we were two people in the band uh, apart from Hannah. Hannah, she just knows the songs so she doesn't really have to take any notes. She made them. Uh, Jonas, he's a percussive player. Percussionists, they tend to write uh, the number of bars and I guess classical players write the number of bars. But for me, it's all about phrases how many phrases. I'm listening to Hannah, what she's singing. Uh, I can see how many phrases she's singing, and how many repetitions. So uh, I'm counting phrases rather than bars because it's helping me stay connected to the music rather than to the, to the kind of grid. Uh, I, might, I might be taking some risks there, but that way when I'm looking at my notes here, I can, I want to invent a language that suits the music and the way I feel the music. I also actually had to, to ask them, what's the, do you call this a bridge? Do you call this part, uh, what do you call this part? It's obviously a transition to the next part and stuff. It's really good to have a common language between the band members so you know what you're talking about. So in, in Norway, uh, I'm not sure if it's something you, you use uh, everywhere in the world, but the stuff that leads into the refrain or the chorus would be a pre-chorus, and then it's the chorus or the refrain, and then a verse, everyone knows what a verse is, and uh, if there's something, I've labeled everything in yellow is something that is sort of outside of the grid, something that it's not like, neatly organized like this some sometimes it's like oh this is an extra bar in there or an extra little uh, uh, half bar or something I label that stuff in yellow like I use a marker and uh, yeah this one for instance is an extra extra thing extra bar that I yellow so there's a way to remind myself that pay attention to this it's not following the the 444 structure here is like an extra. Pay attention to that, remember. Yeah, let's just go through this, um, this little song here. First, there's an intro by Jonas. He's gonna start some uh, percussive elements. Then I'm gonna make a, do a bass. And I, I use track number three here, uh, which is the Celeste. I also made some markings down here in colors, you can see. So I made a, a blue marking here when the Celeste is playing, and then a, a purple marking when the piano is playing. This might not be final, but in the being, beginning, it's like... It, it's a, a, a little bit unsure of how tightly I should stick to the grid there, but at some part, at some point, Jonas is stabilizing the tempo, and then it's up to me to start going into this part, which is uh, laying out the foundation of the song. And then it's like this. And two, so twice. Then Hannah starts singing, 
and I'm gonna stick to this for a while for the first phrase of her pre-verse and then I'm gonna build up to the chorus and it's like this the refrain and this you can see I, I changed the color here to purple which means remember to change into piano here so I have like a little gap there to do this to fade up the piano and I think I'm gonna leave the bill the Celeste in there because it sounds good it sounds good together and so I'm going crazy You can see this that's what I just played there. It's one uh, one phrase. And then I'm gonna take the same phrase once again. And this is the way I've labeled it. It's sort of a way of um, it's sort of classical to to make this sort of brackets there and tell you how many times you should play these and when to play the next ones. So but I, I sort of made it a little bit custom. So um, I need to quickly go to the Celeste sound again, so fade out the piano. And this is one of these, I should actually um, make this yellow. Because this sort of doesn't really follow the 4x4 grid, it's a little special place. So. I'm gonna play that three times. And this is a place for me to play for as much as I have time to, but then I need to fade in the piano again to go to this uh, new section. So. And this, I'm not sure if it makes sense to keep the Celeste here. I could wing it. And I told you about the bass layer. And this is something I need to experiment uh, during the pre-production. Uh, pre uh, like, if we get to a, a stage, we could try a bigger, sorry, a bigger sound system. We can see how much bass is needed to kind of make the mix full. So I have the, I have the possibility. You can hear the sub bass. In. And I figured this will be a useful thing to go from a simple expression to a more full uh, embodiment of the, of the song. So I have a sub bass in there. From here, we're going to the pre-chorus, and now I've already written how to play the pre-chorus. So, for every instance, I'm just writing the word there, hoping that I remember what it is. And also, not typing the notes makes me stay alert. Uh, and staying alert means that I will learn. If I'm typing the notes every time, I'm not staying alert as much, and it's going to take a longer time for me to, to learn. So the more that I can look away from the notes, the better. So I'm going from this to the pre-chorus again. And this is a special one. Like the usual way to play it is. But here is like this. 
tum. And then there's like a break where Han is singing, I think I'm losing my mind, break. And I'm just going to listen to her and pay attention to this extra little break there. It's actually uh, like the Jonas is playing the rhythmical part. He said, like, no, it's, it's just straight. Everything is straight. But for me, I'm listening to the phrases and the phrases telling me that there is an extra break there. But for him, he's counting the actual uh, the actual bars and the, the notes and it's evening out in the end. <laughs> but for me, it's super strange to think that way. So I need to think about this as a as a spe special little part and this break is sort of loose with a really tight extra uh, quarter note break. So. I think I'm crazy. I think I'm losing my mind. Break. Yeah. So, so, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the part there. And now I kind of lose this. Yeah, I miss it. I miss the little bell there. I think I'm losing my mind. <laughs> And now for the ending here, you know, it's repetition, so what we've already done, uh, so I don't need to, to type any musical notes down here, but pay attention to extra little snippets, extra bars, and um, pre-chorus, refrain, and the ending is a... Yeah. So the way I've been rehearsing, I've actually been playing the, the songs through the iPad, over here into the input, input pressing the uh, AD input uh, on off button here. So now I can just monitor every sound that's coming here. It's just gonna be played here. So it's a really neat way to rehearse. You can play the sound in here or you can mix something else in here, uh, maybe a secondary synth or something. It's just, yeah, great. I'm just going to try to play through once and see see what it feels like uh, and just to give you an impression of what a keyboard player in a pop um, arrangement could uh, could be doing through a live set. So when I perform this I'm going to try to sing a little bit here just to give you an impression of what it's like but to be honest singing and playing they have such different rhythms so whenever I sing I kind of mess up the timing uh, of my playing, so uh, uh, um, yeah, bear, bear, me, bear with me. So Jonas is starting with this group of people singing in the reverse loop, like and then he's gonna build up a steady uh, thumping sort of uh, beat, like I'm gonna come in with this uh, bass here. Um, and then I'm gonna play this first. And from this point on, Hannah can start singing whenever she feels ready. I'm just gonna keep track of when she starts singing.
think I'm losing my mind uh. I'm going crazy I think I'm losing my mind I'm crazy My heart can't love anymore I'm going crazy This is the most difficult to, to go. I think I'm gonna have to skip. And that's the song, that's the song. And it sounds a little bit like awkward to just play this part uh, because it's relying so much on, on the whole arrangement. So so just me playing my part is, obvi is obviously something missing. So Jonas and me uh, together, I hope we can bring the full experience. Not, not like that, the exact same as what's on the album, but we can bring like a... Yeah, we, we can make the song justice. And yeah, looking forward to it. And I think with, with pop music, perhaps, or maybe all music, timing is what I need to work really hard on. When I'm singing now, my timing is awful uh, because I'm trying to sing uh, and have the same correct timing. But it's really precise, like... <laughs> in my mind uh. and it's not just the way you press it it's the way you release it like on the album it's really programmed a lot of programmed stuff there like super tight snappy key offs like and in this version of the instrument like this Put a little reverb on there and a small um, kind of release time to let it ring out. But actually, on the album, it's really, really tight. It's even tighter than this. Like, there's even, there's like no release time. It's like, but I figured, like, when we're playing this live, um, we don't have access to the whole arrangement. So there's going to be small parts missing and in order to kind of fill out that space of the stuff that is missing, each part that is there can take a little bit more room and be a bit more live friendly. So even though I'm going to play this, this part is going to have, like on, on the album, it has some... Um, it has a, a different arrangement. I'm gonna play the same sound with the same rhythm. Just to have the same element that was there, but just it's not playing exactly the same as on the album, but it's still representing that kind of sound and the vibe. Yeah. Hmm. So yeah, lots of rehearsing. Uh, I've got nine songs of the new album and uh, 
this is the only one that's been released yet so it's the only one I'm gonna show you and uh, yeah I, I know most of the songs now I just need to practice and practice and practice and yeah I was gonna have like a little session of practice every day of July I think and then it's gonna be pretty good yeah so this is the way I'm uh, kind of working with uh, the Mod X6 I, I find it to be a really good companion the way it's laid out is uh, once I get a, the head around it it's actually quite easy to understand and I, I feel like I can trust it uh, yeah yeah so yeah there you go um, I'm playing a Yamaha Mod X6 and I'm gonna play keyboards in the band so uh, if you enjoy what I do here on, on uh, YouTube please uh, consider hanging out on my Patreon site where you can also support me if you want to. Uh, so uh, you go to my Patreon site, it's very easy to set up a donation. Uh, exactly how much you want to donate is up to you. Uh, a lot of people donate to me and I'm so grateful for that because when you do that, you're helping me uh, stay on track and uh, I can make more videos like this. And uh, yeah. So, at some point, I want to show you really how to work with a sound engine here. I find it to be a lot of fun, especially when you're using your own samples. But also, like I did here on the piano, to use some of what's in here as additional elements that make your own stale samples spring to life in a way that's really difficult to do yourself, like to make multi-velocity layers of samples. It's really time-consuming and different difficult so there there's elements in here that can be used to spice up your own samples which is super nice yeah well i guess that's it for today um if you want to know more about hannah huckleberg go to her uh, her homepage hannahuckleberg.com there's a link in the description down below and uh, also if you want to check out when and where she's going and where I'm going, maybe you can uh, come uh, watch her play, or, and me play, <laughs> us, watch us play. And uh, yeah, it's going to be mostly in Germany, and also in Norway. Uh, cool. Peace out, everyone. You're so lovely, and thank you for hanging out with me, and hope to see you soon again. Peace out.